Welcome back to my channel with myself Isabella. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you're new here, welcome. Click that subscribe button so you never miss another video. I'm so excited you're here today. Today's a really exciting video and it's one that a lot of you requested and you requested it after I posted the Maria Horova exam analysis video which you guys really enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Now at the end of that video I said to you guys would you enjoy looking at an analysis of how the Vaganova has changed and this is like honestly guys this is better than Netflix for me. This is like amazing history documenting watching. So I haven't actually done this myself in this kind of detail before on my own. Obviously I've watched, I don't know how many Vaganova videos over the years of all different levels, you know, but I haven't watched in this context sort of one after the other looking specifically at how they're different. Now, what we're gonna be looking at today, and obviously I can't go year after year after year after year, we'd be here for hours, but you know, we could also create a series, wouldn't that be cool? Comment down below if you want a series. But this is what I decided to look at today. So we're gonna be looking at, also, this is the BWI Merch notebook, hard route now, easier later. I'm gonna be looking at the year 91 with Lepatkina's graduation year, which I thought would be fascinating. Also, you know, she's so young in it. Then we're gonna to go to 96 with Zaharva. Then we're gonna to go to the year of 98. Then, and I forget exactly who, uh, which year that is. Ah, that is um, um, Ekaterina Borchenko, so Kovalova's class. And then we'll be going to year 2011, which is Olga Smanova, 2013, Udalenkova's class, which is, because obviously 2011, Olga Smanova, 2012 was me, but we've watched a lot of me. <laughs> and then 2013, Udalenkova, which my friend is a part of that class, and uh, Renata Shakirova is a part of that class, who is now uh, really up and coming. She's improved so much and become so confident. Soloist of the Marinsky, amazing dancer, should be principal soon. Then we're gonna be looking at 2018 Girls, which is uh, Maria Horova. Then we're gonna be looking at, because I haven't analyzed this online yet, I kinda wanna do this separately as well, but we're looking at the 2018 Boys, which is Nikolai Tsiskaritsi's, I believe it's his first exam, correct me if I'm wrong. But anyway, it's kind of quite an iconic exam because it's just so, it's just so different. And I really think this was the hallmark of when things drastically changed, like when things started to look so different. And I think it's kind of like, it's weird to say, but it's kind of, even though it's very impressive, it's also kind of a really kind of scary, eerie, eerily different moment. Cause it's kind of like, especially after, after we watch all these years now, it's gonna feel then suddenly, okay, someone's come in to decide and wants to put their mark on it and change everything or just make it look so different. And that's fine, but it is extremely different. And you'll see, and I'll, I'll share my thoughts on that. And then we'll be skipping to the 2023 girls who we've analyzed a little bit already separately. We'll just see the difference really. I already can think in my head how it's gonna look and how different it's gonna be. So very, very interesting. Obviously we can't watch the whole exam of each one. <laughs> so we're gonna start with Lepatkina and we're just gonna be looking at sections of it. I've picked a couple of sections and we'll start with her. Obviously an older video and so you can see um, the quality is not so great. And there's a cameraman at the back in this one. Lovely one is your exercise. And that's Lepakina on the end there. Beautiful legs. Oh. <laughs> Simple exercise, well, simple structured exercises though, in terms of comparing to how they are now. Not dissimilar from the sort of exercise that I had in my exam. Notice how the arm is always directly to the side in second, so it's in line with your back. I mean, beautiful attitudes. Have separate balance. Long balance there, that was long. Obviously it's a little blurry, but we can see most of it. I 
I just feel like the exercise is obviously complicated in, in that they're moving direction a lot, but they're just a little bit more, I would say, pure, pure and not overly, overly complicated. I really love um, Le Pecklin's lines as well. She clearly stands out, mostly because she's she's much taller than the rest of them. I understand. <laughs> Someone went the wrong way there. It also seems like they're not as um, polished in the sense that you know they haven't the exams haven't been as rehearsed potentially. Like you know how they're opening all the legs differently, and some of them are going different ways. That there's already been quite a few mistakes. But the exercises are cleaner and in, like more academic. Beautiful. Love those turns at the bar, slash, hate them. The girls, you know, the legs, like often we think about from earlier sort of years back, legs were lower, etc. But the legs are kind of more or less, more or less as high as they are now. I would say, I don't know whether it's the camera, I'd say the girls are, are much um, leaner looking now. Whether that, Whether that's sort of been asked of them or not, or whether that's just evolved, um, they just look slightly different. Um, but even from this year, 91, to what we're going to watch in a second, which is 96 with Zaharova, um, I think I think Zaharova, when Zaharova came along and, and the likes of Alina Samova slightly later, you know, they probably set the trend for this leg height. I like the uniforms though, I really love the long sleeves, like long sleeves is just my favourite thing and um, I think it was long sleeves for a while if I'm honest actually, I've noticed they're in long sleeves a lot, notice the difference, look at that, the difference between Grand Batman and Balançoire, I'm always shouting at my <laughs> students for this because it very often kind of looks like Grand Batman and Balançoire are the same, so that was some of the bar. Now we're going to skip along and watch a little bit of the center. All right, here we go. Here's Lepakina. Nice fondue on Demi Point. I didn't change the wooden floor that much that much before I got there. Like, I think it was that year I joined. I joined in 2000, 2008. And when I went there um, the year before, it was still wood. So they'd only just changed it. Very clean, nice. Not complicated though, like, not all over the place, simple, pure. Which kind of translates to, I think, how they dance on stage. You know, Lepatkin is one of those, she's not fancy, there's no frills, there's no over-exaggerating, it's all kind of subtle, subtle beauty, you know? Very pure lines. Well, she's a bit late. <laughs> it's what I mean, it is a little bit under-rehearsed looking. But I would say actually because they're more difficult combinations in terms of oh look, applause. They're more difficult because of how um, slow and academic they are. When it stuff's fast and all over the place, in a sense it's slightly easier because that you're just moving more. Whereas when it's just, you know, very precise, very academic, nice pirouettes. 
it's harder. More obvious errors. <laughs> that, that blonde girl, um, she's over it. Alright, let's watch this exercise and then we'll skip ahead again. There's Lepakina in the front. Just, she does have a beautiful, you know what it is, she's got a beautiful long neck and head. Long face, which looks good on stage. And beautiful long limbs. Oof. Challenging though, challenging, my goodness. So we're gonna move on a bit more so we see them in the, um, in the tutus. Here we go. Bit of Grandpa Classique. Now, the, none of these girls are Lepakina just yet. And what's so interesting from this, back to this era, you know, 91, etc., in the 90s, I loved how they wore the tutus for the point work. And just, you know, they don't do that anymore. And they look very Spanish y, you know, with the, the black trim. And they're very bouncy tutus, you know? So a lot, a lot has changed. No more long sleeves, no more tutus. Most of the time they have to wear these brown leotards. <laughs> I remember watching these exams when I was um, younger. You know, when I was just dreaming, dreaming of going. And I can understand now, obviously it's, it's much more normalized for me, but I can understand how um, it just seems like a dream and very intimidating watching these exams, very intimidating to think, um, oh, that's Lepatkin on the, on the right there. Oh, she's tired, she fell a bit. <laughs> very intimidating to watch these exams um, and thinking, gosh, is it even possible, you know? But it is, we've been there, done it. I would say, you know, from my perspective here, the exercises are more, a little bit more classically pure. Like for example, they're covering the steps that are in the, that are in the syllabus, and we're not frilling around too much with anything else. And we're not trying to show off with tricks or anything. We're just making sure everything is pure and by the system and done beautifully. You know. There's the back in her. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Applause. Well guys, super interesting that one. Okay, we'll leave that one there. That's the back in her done. We've got a whole list here. Um, <laughs> so yeah, those are my thoughts on, on that one. Again, really enjoyable and I can, you know, start to also think, you know, can you see that in this day and age? And I can totally see that, that standard now. The only thing that would be different now is, you know, the legs are higher, things are um, required like that, like, you know, legs need to be slightly higher, turns need to be more than two, this kind of thing, and we'll see that as we develop, and um, it gets more tricksy, I think, you know, less kind of like, let's keep it very, very pure classical. So now we're going to move on to Svetlana Zaharova, 96, the year 1996, so I was four years old. This will be really interesting because obviously Svetlana Zakharova started to lift the legs high when we were doing this one. So let's have a look. Lovely group of people. And the teacher at this point, you know, still looks quite young. She looks a bit like Maya Prasetskaya from the side. Or no. Yeah, my presets go, yeah. Long sleeves still? Long sleeves are still here. I'm I'm living for the long sleeves, like but no skirt. I'm not living for the for the no skirt. <laughs> so it's gone through various phases here. Long sleeves, no skirts, and then we had skirts and we were able to wear what we wanted. We went through a phase of uniforms of 
we were allowed to design our own graduation um, leotards. We were design allowed to design it with the leotard lady, which is where my Vaganova skirt is from. And then that you guys often comment on, you know, where did you get that long black skirt? She made it for me. I mean, the turnout's greater, I think, <laughs> in this year. Um, and then. And then now we've gone to brown and no skirts in class and only skirts at certain points, you know. I'll be interested to see if they um, still wear tutus in this year. This is just five years later. So at this moment I think there is slightly more range, more turnout and uh, more flexibility, definitely more flexibility and again whether that's asked of them or not um, or whether that's just evolved and nonetheless it's, it's how things have developed. Even though you know wood is kind of deemed as kind of not comfortable this wood is actually really comfortable because it's it's very like um, worn down wood. You know, it's been it's been wet a lot of times with the watering cans that they have, and it also has nice grip to it. You know, nice turnout from everybody. Interesting, beautiful feet. Honestly, beautiful technique from everyone here. And more polished looking, I think. Just thinking to how Lepatkina developed, you know, she'd never lost her purity, you know, throughout her entire career. But it's kind of sad actually because I remember she felt, I think she felt really uncomfortable towards the end, like taking class with the younger kids who were kind of technically much stronger and, well, technically let's say more tricksy. Um, she kind of isolated herself a little bit, which I don't think really helped because she left in the end super quietly which, you know, didn't get much of a kind of occasion of her retirement, you know, which is super sad, super sad. I mean, she's such an icon, you know, she didn't really deserve that. But I think, it, I mention it because um, there were ballet masters who were kind of saying, oh no, she needs to, she needs to kind of stop, she needs to go because she's, you know, she's not doing double fouetting, she's not doing this, you know, it's like, really? Seriously? <laughs> I mean, horrendously flexible, amazing. Look at Svetlana's a her. So Svetlana is the one with the very pale tights. So she's second in from the left. But everyone has fantastic turnout. Svetlana has a beautiful body. And I would say the Vaganova system is kind of designed and it's most comfortable for dancers who have this kind of body and this kind of range, like it's what is um, required, you know, really. That's why, you know, people like Elena Vostratina, Vostratina, who is in Zurich Ballet, and Elena Samova did super well, and um, Maria Horova, and you know, August Manova, all these people. But the thing is, if you're not born like a Svetlana Zakharova, um, <clears throat> the technique kind of caters to you getting to the level of very nice, beautiful high legs because of the strength building exercises and just the work you put in, like you have to, you have to stretch, you have to deliver. And it creates such beautiful lines. 
beautiful flat back. I mean, look, every time she plies with the legs in, with the leg in front, the body is flat. So gorgeous. Beautiful supporting heel forwards. I would say the exercises are still simple, not too fancy, but the bodies and the range and the facility has changed vastly a lot. The bodies are slightly slimmer, the range is greater. But you know, on a technical level, just watch every time we fondue, every time she fondues and all the classmates, um, the back never drops, never drops. Even if you're looking into your hand in fondue, you're never dropping the back. It's always staying super happy. <coughs> Little pause. Oh, very nice. I think we're just watching the whole bar here. <laughs> Beautiful. I reckon as well, having, you know, it really is important who's, who's surrounding you. You know, so if, with people like Svetlana Zahara in the class, I'm sure it pushed the others to their fullest potential, you know, and pushed the others to have higher legs and then, and then thus push the years down below and the coming years. So I think people like Svetlana Zahara had a huge impact on the development of the students of the Vaganova. And also when a teacher sees someone has that range, course they're going to push to use it and work on it. But again, the exercises are nice, but nice and not too crazy, but beautiful nonetheless because everything's just so how it should be. girls on the side as well, I mean they're beautiful as well. Beautiful use of body. I think next to Svetlana Zakharova is Daria Pavlenko. Gorgeous, knees open. Ah, oh, Devon Faye Valade. Ponche. Oh no, no Ponche. <laughs> but you know, there's also this thing of some schools say, you know, don't go into your sway back, don't fully stretch into your sway back legs, but people like Svetlana Zahanova, like, no way are they going to dance on bent knees. And they've just trained their muscles from an early age. The school has trained her, like, to hold her glutes, her knee, her thighs, how she's pulling them up. So she's pulling them up properly so she can then show them, you know. Run back, Mon. She's so young. Hitting her arm because she's so flexible. Shoulder back at the bar, you see, you never see that shoulder. It's always held. Super important. You can see how Daria's hips are just not, not quite as open, so for her it's more, slightly more of a struggle. They're all very flexible and have all worked for their flexibility. Apart from Svetlana, who it's, it's more natural for. Alright, interesting. Hey guys, so I hope you enjoyed part one of the Veganova series, Then and Now. Super interesting, right? And I'm living for the long leotards and the purity of line and keeping the exercises 
simple and showing off the purity of the Vaganova technique because Russian ballet isn't just about the Vaganova school, you know, it's also about the Bolshoi school and you can really see a differentiation and I think for me around this time of the training and the the years of the Vaganova, it really showed off what the Vaganova school um, is all about. And so next week we'll be moving on to part two. See you there. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video, you're really going to enjoy my BWI platform. Try it for 14 days, absolutely free. Whether you're a beginner or a professional, we have everything you'll need to succeed. We have classes, courses, which are in-depth lessons, plans, as well as bespoke plans, whether you're struggling with organization and you just really need to know exactly what to do. Maybe you watch endless videos on YouTube, but you don't even know if the level you're watching is catered to you. Well, that's where BWI comes in. Try it for 14 days and you won't regret it. Let's improve your Grand Allegro. Welcome to my Grand Allegro course. In this course, we cover everything to make a good high jump. All right, those are the key rules you need to know for that jump in particular. Step across, arabesque, and chasse. One, always leave your head. Don't look immediately where you're going. Leave the head foot. One, we'll be looking at exercises to strengthen your jump. We'll be looking at explosive power to get nice and high in your jumps, as well as exercises to improve agility and speed, but that's not all. Then we'll be taking you through tutorials of each most commonly used Grand Allegro jump, so you know exactly how to execute them to your best potential. Let's get going.